So another one of the questions that people have been posing, or maybe even almost a suggestion that's been posed uh, a number of times in video comments, has to do with the room behind the theater and the subwoofers, and maybe why why not do bigger speakers and put them behind the screen, or punch through the wall and put the subwoofers uh, with just the baffles facing out. And so I've done a bunch of recording down here, mostly kind of standing from this perspective, where you got to see the door into our storage room, you got to see the AV rack. I've shown a whole bunch of that stuff in the channel, and I think I've made it clear, hopefully, that on the other side of this wall is the theater, right? So down behind the rack, for example, is my punch through where I get the wires, the HDMI to the projector, and speaker cables and such routed uh, from the source and processing components of the rack through to the other room. But I don't show the rest of the room very much. So you can see actually within a couple of feet of the standing AV racks is where our built-in shelving starts. So this is all framed, shelving, painted. We got a lot of stuff in here. Christmas decorations, family photos. So along the remainder of that wall, again, next to the rack here, is fixed shelving that goes almost centrally up to the ceiling. So I really don't have any facility to like punch through this wall and put things behind the screen without significantly impacting the use of the rest of this room. Let alone the fact that the left speaker is basically in the wall behind the rack. The center speaker is probably somewhere right in this area where the shelving starts. And then that left, or I'm sorry, what would be the right channel of the fronts is somewhere over here in this shelf area. So if I were to do subwoofers, if I were to try to punch bigger speakers through in some way, I'd be tearing all of the stuff out of here. And just to give, again, some more perspective. So there's one big L-shaped shelving over there. There's just some miscellaneous space in the corner. And then there's another big L-shaped unit on this side. Quick change of cameras there. My, my Sony recording camera ran out of battery. But in any case, this is my AV section, all my boxes, all my cables and stuff is there. And so we have, again, a, a big L-shaped section of storage built in, nailed in, screwed in, attached to the wall. Right next to the door is that one. And again, if I rotate back around, this other big L-shaped section, there's the boxes for the Arundels and then all that other stuff. But I don't really have facility in here to to open this up, to knock through. So you can kind of see why I was focusing on getting the subwoofers actually in the room. And I have to admit, while we were on vacation here, driving up, driving back, thinking about stuff, it did run through my mind the idea of, well, maybe I could have went in walls with the subwoofers as well. I had the, I have the joy section, say in between the right and the center and the left and the center, I could put two subs up front there. I could put subs underneath the left and the right surround or the right and uh, left surround backs, those new SVS 3000 series in-wall subs and so on. But I don't know, I think, I think the subwoofer is the one speaker that gains a lot of performance benefits and improvements, just better scale by, by leaving that one in room. I don't think I'm compromising by putting the speakers in wall relative to what I had before. I think overall it's, it's 10 times better actually having speakers behind the screen, having speakers in the ceiling directly above the seating and that and such, but the subwoofers, I don't know. Um, I, I, I've also found too fairly quickly here that the, the limitations of my room relative to how much base it can actually contain, uh, having the subwoofers in the walls, I, I don't know. So I think in my case, it's, it's a little better, a little easier. You get more, more value, more efficiency, more bang for your buck by keeping the subwoofers in the room, making them be their separate boxes. I'm definitely not punching anything through this wall behind me. And, and so that's, I think that's the best, the best way to go. Plus if I did in-wall subwoofers, I'd have to have the amplifiers in the rack here. I've got rack space for it technically, but it's, it's more stuff to plug in. I've got a separate 20 amp circuit actually in the theater room and a, and a 120 amp circuit, dedicated circuit running to the rack. And then the plugs in the theater room themselves are a separate, fairly dedicated 20 amp circuit. There's really not much else in the house that runs on those. And we did it that way because that room was intended to be a gym. 
working with the electricians when we built the house, we figured, well, there might be some like treadmills or some heavy motor, you know, type of cardio equipment plugged in. So they did the 20 amp circuit over there. That's great for plugging in two or maybe someday three or four subwoofers and their, their bigger amplifiers and the projector. So that stuff is isolated on one circuit. The rest of the rack is on its own circuit. I think it just makes sense sticking with the, the subwoofers the way that I was intending to do it. And again, definitely not punching through and avoiding the in walls as well. So while we were gone the last few days as well, we took a uh, we took a run up to the upper peninsula of Michigan. Some awesome memories with the kids and the family. Super cold, massive amounts of snow, but we were walking out on Lake Superior, seeing these ice caves and these ice curtains. Uh, a lot of really great, awesome outdoor, fresh air type of scenery. But while I was gone, electronics still happened and my new Kaleidoscape came. So there's the Strato C player and the Terra Compact Terra 12 terabyte movie server. I also got the rack mount kit as part of a like a three piece combo uh, with them. I think I will go ahead and use the rack kit to install these. I did make a decision as well for the local media that I am doing. I think um, I'm going to bail on the Oppo and I'm going to bail on the idea of ripping anything that I do keep locally to ISO. So I'm going to go MKV instead, put in a little bit of extra time and effort, and the MKVs can already play to the Apple TV very effectively with Infuse. And so I bought the Oppo primarily to do full ISO playback. I'm just going to go ahead and reflip that. I should get my money right back out of it, hopefully sell it very quickly. So I'm going to yank the Oppo, go ahead and box it up, put it up for sale, bail on that one, get the Kaleidoscape kind of installed, um, either in its spot, or I think I might put the Kaleidoscape right here. I want to leave this bottom shelf open for another idea I have for the living room. More on that soon, and, and after I talk to my wife about the ideas as well. So let's get this Oppo out. Let's get some things shifted around. Let's get the Kaleidoscape in and get set back up with that. The Strat OS has been out for a week or so, a couple weeks maybe actually. And in its place, we have the Strato C and the Terra, Compact Terra 12 terabyte. Strato C and Terra, Compact Terra, 12 terabyte installed using the rack mount. The faceplate goes over the bracket that they're both sitting on. I like that. I'm glad I used that actually. Glad that came with the kit and the combo. So I've, I took the Oppo out. I've got the Apple TV on top. That's the theater Apple TV. The living room Apple TV is back in the living room behind the television because of some HDMI uh, syncing, showing the image issues I was having with the Zone 2. Got the Kaleidoscape there uh, next, and an empty shelf. I think that shelf may soon house a mini DSP for the living room. We'll see. Let's take a look around back. There. Strato C on the left, the Terra on the right. Terra, of course, the deeper of the two. I went ahead and put the I went ahead and put the power bricks on top of the back of the Terra and I used my shorter power cables to get get power HDMI, Ethernet, 
and the two bricks. Still interested to try out that linear power supply for the Strato, but we'll see. That'll come some point later on. All right, so it turns out I'm not done installing speakers, and I have some clarity and uh, next steps and vision for the living room. So as of now, the Focals, the Electra Towers, were sold. As of recording this video, a uh, freight company came and picked them up, shipped them out last Friday. Got a good price for them, relative especially to what I paid. Quite happy with that. Still sad to see them go, but in the end, I don't think it was the right uh, type of product for the living room, especially given that I already have the the clean bump out install. We did all this architectural stuff when we built and designed the house and it's silly to just compromise all of that when this room is so clean. And quite honestly, I think my wife already feels there's enough visible audio video with the in walls and with the TV in the inset that I was really pushing it, even considering putting towers in here. But I am gonna still upgrade this room and sooner than later. So running in here is the triad 2.2 setup. There's a, a pair of silver LCR sixes and a pair of bronze uh, bronze subs, both in the in wall. And one of them is a leftover speaker. When I did the room originally, I had three silver LCRs up above the TV and I had other speakers in the ceiling. I talked about that in like some of the very first videos I did on the channel and how I kind of overloaded this room with audio way overdid it, too much altogether, stuff in the wrong places, and then kind of led me on the road to doing the, the independent dedicated room in the basement, which I'm very happy to have. But I still want some better quality up here. I want real speakers, some real amplification, and so on. But I don't need multi-channel audio up here. I'm committed to it being a 2.2 system. So I had sold, I had actually taken everything out, and I paid a handyman to patch up all the holes and all that stuff. And I had been using a sound bar in here for a while. And to me, that, that didn't cut it. I wanted discrete speakers. And again, uh, real processing, real amplification, and, and just better, better than that. So I still had one remaining silver LCR, the one that ended up over here as the left channel, because it was the center. It was an oddball speaker. I sold the other ones as a pair, but nobody wanted three and I was never able to sell the single. I was actually never able to sell the subs. I tried listing them a couple times. Just didn't drop the price far enough, ultimately. I didn't wanna, I just didn't feel right selling. So I still had the stuff and I ended up putting it back in. But I made probably one of the biggest rookie mistakes I've ever made in my audio video dome. So take a close look at that speaker. Notice the driver array and the setup. And take a close look at that speaker. They're not the same. They're both triad silver LCR6s. That's an earlier, I don't know where my finger is, that's an earlier generation one. That's a later generation one. That's the one I actually bought myself. I picked this one up, used as a single, relatively cheap off of eBay, advertised as a silver LCR6 in good condition, working condition, and I had no inclination to even think that there were two different versions of the speaker. And it occurred, I only even noticed this well after the fact. I installed the thing, I had the stuff set up, and along the way, for whatever reason, I ended up having both grills off, and it, and it clicked in my head, looking at them finally, that that's not the same speaker. Same exact dimensions, fits the same cutout, uses the same uh, metal magnetic speaker covers, all that stuff. But it's not the same speaker, it's a different version. So in essence, the triads are gonna go. I'm gonna stick with my baby, my favorite Focal. And I've been so uh, enamored with the performance of the 1000 series that I'm gonna bring some 1000 series speakers in here as well. So I already ordered them. They actually shipped um, as of just before recording this video, I got the UPS tracking number. I have another pair of Focal 1000 IW LCR 6s. I didn't go Utopias. I'm not spending that kind of money. I don't think I necessarily have the vertical space for the Utopia anyway. I don't think it's really worth it. I think the IW LCR 6, particularly because I am going to keep the subwoofers. It's going to stay 2.2 Focal uh, mains, Triad subs. I'll stick to the Triad amps that I recently put in, the newer version, the upgraded version of those. I'll stick to using zone two on the Anthem, and I will stick to using the extra two Parasound A52 Plus channels to drive what will become the these Focal 1000 LCRs. 
the nice thing about it is the cutout for a triad silver LCR6 is a hole in the wall that is 10 and 7 eighths inches and the cutout for a Focal 1000 IW LCR6 is 10 and 7 eighths inches. I couldn't, it's fate, it's meant to be. Good karma, something, I don't know. But in any case, the, the, the IW LCR6 isn't as tall as the Utopia. So it will fit, I'll, I'll end up cutting down a bit more and, and maybe even an inch or so taller. I'll make sure that I stay probably a good three or four inches above the subwoofer. But basically in that same cavity, I'll zip a little bit out above, I'll zip a little bit out below. Those Focal will fit right in there. I will paint those grills. I don't think the white grills will fly in here. I'll get them blacked because all of the other AV gear up on this wall is black. So that'll be my first attempt to spray paint those, um, those Focal speaker grills. And this room will then be on par with the theater room, which is something that I was trying to achieve. So for up here, two channel music, TV watching, some game playing, some like side, maybe not critical movie watching, the audio in here will just be great. But the one thing that I don't have in this room is any type of real active processing, uh, room EQ, or crossover management either. So I'm looking really hard. I need to call and talk to them and get some information, but I think ultimately I'm gonna grab a mini DSP, like a two by four HD, one of those that has Dirac and would give me the ability to take the zone two analog output of the AVM70, the left and right RCA output, go into the mini DSP, and then that has four RCA, I'm sorry, two inputs to the mini DSP, and then the mini DSP has four RCA outputs. So one uh, left, right, one each for left, right mains, and one each for the left, right subwoofers. Get it all configured, be able to set the crossovers, use Dirac, have this room EQ'd, and I think it will bring this space up to probably the max that the living room is going to um, achieve. So I'll be kind of pretty much end game. I think that will be be really awesome. Music will be great and everything else will be great as well. I can notice a difference in dialogue and other things definitely between using the theater. I think with those speakers that are down there and particularly having them EQ'd with Anthem Arc relative to these. I was watching the boys. Um, I watched season one and season two binge through them and I watched most of it in the living room and I found myself a lot of times going back, jumping back to see what Billy Butcher had to say. But the few episodes that I watched downstairs never had a problem, understood him with a level of clarity that I just don't get up here. And so I think, again, the combination of the Focal 1000 and running a room EQ, get direct, get this all nice and leveled out, will just absolutely take care of that. And this room will be smoking. So of course, I'll be covering that on the channel as well. I'm glad I have the experience of doing the in walls for the theater and handling the Focal 1000. So uh, no concerns at all about my capabilities to get those speakers running in here. That's my plan for the living room. No more towers, but we are bringing it up to spec and playing with the mini DSP, if that solution works, how I think it will and work with the rest of the system down there. Give me something else to cover and particularly like the user experience. I'm kind of interested to see between Anthem Arc, which I've been spending a ton of time with and learning about in a very, very uh, more technical manner and, and Dirac. So that'll be, that'll be interesting and obviously something to talk a bunch about in future videos here on the channel. So that's it, living room all set and underway.